Hi everyone. I hope you missed our videos about report portal functionality. We've just released the version 5.4, which consists of many enhancements and fixes from backend to AI. So don't hesitate to update and see what's changed. Today, I would like to focus your attention on what was changed in the analyzer and what should be checked from your side to install it properly. At first, I would like to remind you just briefly the auto analysis process, but for more details, please watch the previous video on our channel. We store logs from launches in Elasticsearch, and each log is described by many fields which contain launch, test item information, as well as extracted useful parts from a log message itself. When a new test item appears, we search for logs similar to it, and these logs become the candidates for our algorithm. After that, we regroup them by their issue types and calculate features based on the group itself and the best representative from it. The features become an input to our gradient boosting model, which predicts the probability for a test item to be of a specific defect type. And the issue type with maximum probability and more than a threshold 0.5 will become a final decision for analysis. In our case, a new test item will be labeled as a product bug. The information from the best representative of this group, such as issue description and Jira tickets, will be copied to this new test item. Now let's go to changes. We've added more options for the number of log lines in the settings. It will help you to choose the most appropriate log lines quantity to restrict what log parts will be used for auto analysis. Together, mean should match and number of log lines are our compulsory condition for auto analysis, but we also use other information from your logs to find more relevant results for your use cases. Our users shared interesting use cases and we decided to address them and add to our algorithm. It turns out that sometimes test automation engineers change their mind on the real reason for test failure, even though we reported the same log lines for this test item. This can happen due to new circumstances or the real reason was revealed just after some time. That's why we would like to override the previous results by the new ones. So how it's solved in our algorithm. When a new test item appears, we search for similar logs and we give more boost to recent test items with the same test item unique ID and we will filter out all the results for the same log. Also, we add a new feature as an input, which represents the latest defect type of a test item unique ID. The left way plan stays the same, and the model gives us the probability for a test item to be of a specific issue type. According to our experiments, this feature helps the model to give higher probability for the latest results. Let's demo our first case. We have one launch and let's pick up one test item. For example, test item SQL exception. We think that it has a system issue defect type. So we expect that in the next runs at the same launch and with similar logs, our test item will be labeled as a system issue. So I am importing a new launch and let's start our analysis. It worked as expected, but we've understood that our test item has a different reason for failure, and it's a product bug. So we would like to propagate the latest results to the further runs at the same launch. Due to our improvements on the analyzer side, the latest results have more weight in the decision making. And that's why for this auto analysis run, the test item will be labeled as a product bug. We've decided to add even more personalized per project modeling. The previous personalization came mostly from your data, search algorithms, and your identification of what different type groups mean for you. Uh, but features were calculated by the logics which were shared between projects. And now we add in features which are calculated and stored per project. The first feature is about finding more important stack trace lines. 
We've noticed that the log lines with namespaces from the software we are testing, in our case it's com.epm, are more variable than the ones from testing or shared libraries such as org.testng, java.lang. That's why we are finding more variable namespaces and consider them more important and store them per project. So the feature calculates cosine similarity between stack trace log lines related by their importance. Now let's see how it works at Report Portal. We have three test items, failed with external issue, failed with external issue less similar, and failed with external issue more similar. Pay attention to these stack trace log lines, starting from com.epam. They are about finished test item handler implementation test. We think that this test item failed because of a product bug. The second test item is less similar because it is about start test item handler implementation test and with the same namespace com.epm. The third one is about finished test item handler implementation test but has small differences in other stack trace log lines. As far as we are gathering all the information about tests, we can find more important namespaces and in our case com.epm is the one which is important. That's why we would like to connect only felt with external issue more similar and assign a product bug issue type to it. The next feature is about multi-label language model trained on the log message without a stick trace. We train random forest classifier on TFIDF, unigrams and bigrams for each defect type, automation bug, product bug and system issue. The global model has three defect types and it's trained on the data from six projects. You have this label since the start of the project, but then the custom model for your project will be also retrained as well as for your custom defect subtypes. When you have at least a hundred label test items, the custom model will be tried to train. If the training is successful, the model will be saved in the menu or file system as you set up. The model is incrementally retrained each time a new portion of 100 test items are labeled. Now let's see how this feature is calculated. So we take a log message from a new test item and predict the probability for it to belong to a specific defect type. In our case, we are interested in probabilities for it to be either a system issue or a product bug. The REST pipeline stays the same. The graded boosting model predicts the final decision based on all features we've calculated. Now let's demo our last case. We have two test items. The first one is about no such element exception and not finding a button run demo. We think this is an automation bug. Let's take a look at the second item. It's about not finding a link, manage forms, but again it's about no such element exception. As far as these two logs, about different locators, but at the same time similar by the words more important for being an automation bug, which can be identified by our detected message language model, autoanalysis can connect them and label the second item as an automation bug. Now I'll explain what's changed in the relationships between services used for analysis. We have our main instance of the analyzer, which indexes and search logs in Elasticsearch and takes models from menu or file system. We've added one more instance for training, which takes data for training from Elasticsearch and saves models and triggering info in the menu or file system. We've decided to separate the main instance logic from training because we don't want it to be disturbed by heavy training operations. But these two instances still use the same image, Service Auto Analyzer. The project information is stored either in menu or in file system. You can see two files are connected with the first feature. The model for the second feature is stored in a folder and defect type triggering info is saved here as well. We've already added necessary specifications into Docker Compose file, but we would like to walk you through the key points so that you could customize it as you wish. Pay attention that both instances share the same image, Service Auto Analyzer, 
and you need to set up storage properly. If you choose menu storage, both setup should have the same specified menu settings. If you choose file system storage, both instances should point to the same mounted storage. Analyzer train instance should contain specification for the environment variable instance task type with the value train because it's responsible for the training part. And we don't want to add parallelization here because of possible heavy operations. So please set the value one into the environment variable with Gary workers. We have improvements in the quality plus 6% on average in comparison with the previous version. Metric blocks for some projects are shown here. Let's sum up. We've added more options for number of log lines in the settings and new features for gradient boosting algorithm. We boost the latest defect type for the study and edit per project features, such as identifying more important namespaces in the stack traces and train detected message language model. So you have more personalized algorithm for analysis, which makes fewer wrong decisions Thus, you have more accurate analysis. I hope you will like our changes. And if you have any questions, please comment here or ask a question in the Slack channel. Thank you for your attention and take care.